please welcome our former United States EPA Administrator and Director of Sea Change, the Center for Climate, Health, and the Global Environment at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Please welcome to the stage, Gina McCarthy. This is really scary. I don't have any money and I don't sing. <laughs> but first of all, thanks for the introduction and Deb, thank you so much for having me tonight. You know, you may be wondering, given my background, how I get out of bed every morning. You know, I spent eight years working for President Obama, delivering on his promise to act on climate, and now everything that I ever goddamn contemplated, thought about, or got accomplished is being rolled back. Well, yes, I wake up every morning and my husband is yelling at the TV about some rollback that's happening, but after about 10 minutes, I say, I love you, but shut up, because I get over it. You got to get over it. Well, why? Because I am an old Irish woman. I come from the city of Boston. Do not mess with me, period. Because I've been working to protect people from pollution for 40 goddamn years. And there is no way that these stooges in DC are going to take me down. You know, the climate crisis hasn't gone away, and I'm not done, and neither are you. We have a big challenge, but get over it. I am not just hopeful we can meet that challenge. I am a climate optimist. You know why? Because I have to be. And you have to be, too, because we have to help one another tell the climate story. We need to make it real and relevant and winnable. Look, for far too long, climate change has been talked about as polar bears, far off places, rather than what it really is, which is the most significant public health challenge of our time. It's about our children. And oh, oh by the way, it's about our children's future other than here with our friends at EMA, the conversation has been drowned out by climate deniers and skepticism. It's not been about action, and we can't wait any longer to take action. Are you with me on this? Look, here's the problem. Most scientists don't know how to communicate. They're not all Bill Nye the science guy. You know, the media has spent years giving false equivalency to folks that deny climate. The oil industry has paid really good money all over the place to cast doubt on the science, to skew the facts, and to control the narrative. And Fox has discussed the Green New Deal more than CNN and MSNBC combined. And guess what? They didn't like it. Look, we can't rely on scientists in the 24-hour news cycle to drive climate action. We need people who can talk to people who talk to people. That's democracy. And that's where you come in, because popular culture has to free us from the partisan divide and, and conservative versus liberal bullshit that has effectively stymied those of us who believe in democracy, people in government and businesses who want to be leaders. You know, we need to be storytellers. We need you. My children and my grandchildren need every one of you. We need to work together to capitalize on the energy and enthusiasm of all of those fabulous young people who are joining in the climate strikes. They want hope from us. They want us to participate. We need to embrace and engage them if we hope to keep all of this momentum that they're driving into the system going. So rather than banging people over the head with the destruction in the mountains of scientific data, let's just admit that explaining it one more time won't really help us get there. Because if truth be told, people already get it. They just don't know what goddamn thing to do about it. 
Yes, climate change is bad, you know, but the solutions really aren't. We can and must grab onto those solutions for dear life, and we need to get others to join. That's the key. You know, Big Little Lies was good. It got so much attention because of a child's anxiety over climate, but it was all about fear. The CNN debate was good because it was the first time there was so much talk of climate change by presidential candidates. But it was too dense, too long, all about what candidates can do, and it was not about what we should do together. You know, the Covering Climate Now initiative by media outlets was an incredible force to get more coverage out here. But it can't end after one week. I don't want a week-long special. I want climate to be a series. I want it to be part of every story, just part of our crazy life and how we roll. You know, The Handmaid's Tale has taken a while, but we're hopefully getting to the hopeful part. And that's where we need to go, right? That's why I'm still watching it. The story ain't over, I hope. Look, the entertainment industry has managed to make other social justice issues mainstream. Just think about Will and Grace. That made gay rights approachable. Cheers in the designated driver campaign saved millions of lives, our children's lives. So together, let's work with Emma and look at what they've been doing 30 years and spread that, create and tell stories that make the climate crisis part of our totally messed up, crazy world in which we live today. And we can't show that climate solutions are not painful. We have to show that they're great for the reasons well beyond climate change. Think about bike paths and greenways. What the hell's the matter with those? They're healthier, they're cooler, they look better. What, a, come on, what are we fighting about? Clean cars can help four million kids who, who have asthma, and the only reason they have it is because they live along highways. Give them electric cars, let them breathe. Windmills don't actually cause cancer, although President Trump might think so, but they do grow jobs, and they save people money on their energy bills. What is wrong with this? It's not sacrifice. And guess what? You can actually shop your fridge to prevent food waste and greenhouse gases and bring fresh, fresh food to all of those neighborhoods with kids and families that have always been left behind. You know, if we divest our addiction to fossil fuels, that means less plastics in our ocean, less pesticides in our food, less creepy chemicals in our water. That means cleaner air, water, and land, a better world. You get it. Does this sound painful? If not, let's go and sell it. The simple task is to make climate change and climate solutions part of our everyday experience. Stories that focus on our health and our communities. If we, if we succeed, then and only then will it stop being about someone else, some other time, and some other place. That's why Harvard Sea Change, my center, has formed a partnership with Emma. Because with their support and yours, we will work together to ramp up our meetings with showrunners, writers, and producers to help them think strategically about adding climate messages into shows and films. Hollywood, you can shift the conversation. You can bridge the gap between feeling helpless and making things happen. Things that don't require sacrifice, but really just require caring. Caring for our family, for our community, for our country, and the future we owe the kids that we will leave behind. What is more patriotic than that? 
So if you want to hang out with us and do what my dad always used to tell me as a kid when I used to whine, he'd say, pull up your big girl pants. Well, what I say to you is pull up your big girl pants, your big boy pants, and your gender neutral pants, and do something. Find Deb or find me. Let's go. Thank you very much.